Hi everyone, Samuel here. Welcome back to another video and I hope you enjoyed my last video I did, the Q2 versus 18mm 1.4 from Fuji. I want to talk more about how I matched the photos of each camera system because I think I was able to match them so close that maybe only a few of you could tell the difference. But I think in terms of color, I basically matched them perfectly. Of course, I didn't do this myself. I had a little help and I'm going to talk about it today. Um, also, this video is not sponsored. If this would be a sponsored video, I would probably start this video like Are you frustrated editing skin tones on your camera system? Or are you a wedding photographer who is really frustrated matching different camera systems? Or something like that. Um, but this video I decided to make uh, myself. I wanted to show you guys something that I found very useful and I'm glad I discovered it. So I discovered um, this company called Cobalt Image and it's run by two Italian guys. Uh, Enrico Scaramelli and Giuseppe Torre and I reached out to them after discovering uh, them on a different forum uh, where people were discussing photo profiles and I was looking for a way to uh, improve the Leica Q2 files because I wasn't happy with my with the Adobe standard profile in Lightroom and the typical ways of calibrating your cameras is to use a color checker and I talked about this in a previous video uh, at the end of this video here um, there I'm doing a little tutorial how you can basically create a profile for Lightroom or Camera Raw so that the colors of your RAW files um, are more accurate. Now these guys here from Cobalt Image, they're doing something similar but a lot better and they sent me a few um, graphics and, and things to show you guys here. I will insert them but honestly uh, Enrico and Giuseppe, I don't know what to make out of this. I'm just a photographer, I'm not that technically minded. But let me read to you what is so special uh, about what they are doing. Our color reproduction is way better compared to the standard profile. Please see below the impressive difference between the two pointer gamuts and the vector size on the SG color checker target. See, they already lost me here. <laughs> but maybe some of you guys know what they're talking about. And then you can see the differences between Adobe standard profile and their profile but you can see um, all of this information on the website under how it works but I want to more talk about the usefulness of it oh I forgot to mention uh, I have no script so <laughs> I forget uh, things sometimes they're basically selling base profiles for your cameras for different camera systems so that you get a good starting point accurate colors um, they're also showing here that um, you won't have these um, artifacts in the, in the photos and the colors. You don't have this oversaturation that sometimes occurs with artificial light or bright uh, saturated colors like red flowers, for example. You won't get that with the base profiles. But what's really cool is, and I think most of you guys are more interested in that, is they have um, film emulations or different camera uh, profile emulations. For example, you can buy all the Fujifilm digital emulations, for example, they have um, the X-Pro2, the X, uh, GFX uh, profiles. So for example, they have um, the GFX has the nostalgic neck or nostalgic negative. That's a film simulation that's only available on the GFX 100, I think. But if you have X100V, for example, or you have a Ricoh GR or, or a Nikon camera, you can basically buy the nostalgic negative profile and use it on any camera. Uh, they also have Canon film emulations or they call it Canon contemporary emulation but they also have um, vintage emulation for example you can get the colors of Canon 1D Mark II or 1D Mark III or the, or the 5D Classic. A lot of people love the colors of the 5D Classic, me included. There's a little catch you need to buy, if you want to use um, a film emulation on multiple cameras, you have to buy a base profile for each camera you own or want to use with the film emulation or camera emulation. Let's check a few more of these emulation packs. Um, there's also a CCD Fever pack, which gives you profiles that emulate, for example, the Leica M9 CCD sensor colors or the Fuji S5 Pro, which does look very nice on, on skins. Um, also the Pentax 6 Pro 5D. And if you shoot black and white, you definitely have to check out the Leica uh, monochrome 
CCD emulation. They also have a CMOS emulation. I've never used the Leica uh, monochrome with the CCD sensor, but people often rave about the, the tones and they say that the CMOS sensor isn't quite as good or doesn't have that magic that the old CCD sensor has. But now, I mean, technically, if you don't have a monochrome sensor, you can't get the exact same tones uh, that you would get on a real monochrome sensor, right? But they get really close and they're showing some side-by-side -side comparisons here. And it's really hard for me to tell a difference. And I've played a little bit with these emulations. Um, I think they're great. They make my Leica Q2 become a Q2 monochrome. Huh? So you can save a little bit and, you know, get a Q or Q2 instead of the monochrome. I think we should open up Lightroom and look at some of these photos and see if these base profiles make a big difference or not. For some cameras I noticed they don't make a huge difference, but once you edit them heavily, um, it does make a difference. And for my Q2, in my opinion, it was a huge difference. So here we have a file from a Ricoh GR3. This is a, a raw file and applied is the Adobe Color Profile here on the top right corner. The Ricoh GR doesn't have any camera matching profiles inside Lightroom, unfortunately. So all you have are the Adobe profiles. But let's check out the Cobalt base profiles and they are listed under Adobe RAW. So let's check out Cobalt Standard. This is how Cobalt Standard looks like compared to Adobe Color. And you can see I'm hovering over it uh, back and forth. It's not a huge difference. I think it makes more sense once you edit your photos. Um, let's check out the other ones. So this is Cobalt Repro. And I think it's short for reproduction or I'm not sure I forgot it, but you can see it on their website. They have a description for it. This basically gives you the most dynamic range. And this is probably very useful if you're shooting landscapes or scenes that have um, a lot of dynamic range. And what's cool about this profile is here, if I click on that and apply it and then go back, my sliders are still set to whatever I set it before. So it's not changing the sliders. So I can still bring down the highlights even more if I want, if I would want to do that. Shout out to Josh Edgus. <laughs> He's probably someone who would appreciate that. Of course, every camera sensor has its limits. So whatever you choose here, it's up to you. I usually just use Cobalt Standard. That works the best for me. So now that we applied the Cobalt Standard Base Profile, um, we are basically ready to edit this uh, photo. And I'm just going to do a quick adjustment here on the tone curve, just showing you a little bit more contrast. And in my experience, the Rico GR files are quite accurate and I don't need these profiles that much. But on some other cameras, uh, especially on Fuji, I prefer using the Cobalt Standard over the uh, camera matching uh, profiles. But what's more exciting are, of course, the camera emulation packs. And I have uh, three packs down here. You see here Cobalt Fuji GFX100. And then I have Cobalt Fuji X Pro 2. And I have the Cobalt Leica Monochrome CCD um, pack. So this is shot on a GR3, right? But we can open up the Cobalt Fuji X Pro 2 profiles here. And let's apply, let's say, Astia. And you can see here, this is without it. This is with Astria. It already looks like a Fujifilm film simulation to, to my eyes. We have Classic Chrome. We have Pro Neck High. Uh, let's go down here. Provia, Velvia, Acros. So if you like the Fujifilm Acros film simulation, you can basically have it on any camera right now. But what's also cool is if we go to the GFX100 profiles, we get two more film simulations. Um, classic negative and nostalgic negative. So you all know classic neck if you're a Fuji film user. And this is pretty much how classic neck looks like. But we can also use nostalgic neck, which was which is only available on the GFX 100 medium format camera. And it's a pretty nice film simulation. It's very warm. And what I like to do if I use this, I don't use this a lot, but let's apply it and go back. Because it's that warm, I like to uh, counterbalance 
the colors by using a colder white balance. And what this does is it makes the shadows a little blue, um, but it can look can look nice. And to show you how accurate the Cobalt um, film emulations are, I have an XH1 file here and I have applied the camera matching profile for, uh, I think it's Provia, yeah. So these profiles here on the right, they come with your raw files. So these are from Fujifilm or from Adobe. And I selected Provia here. And let's compare it to the Cobalt uh, profile. There's only a slight difference in contrast, but the colors are pretty much the same. So Cobalt definitely nailed the colors here. And again, you can go and open up the GFX100 profiles and give your X-H1 or X-T2 or X100F, any X-T camera for that matter, uh, you can give it the Nostalgic Neck uh, film simulation. So here's how the X-H1 would look like with Nostalgic Neck or even Classic Neck, which is not available for the X-H1. Here's a little street snap uh, shot on the GR3 and this is Adobe Color. Let's apply some of these Fujifilm emulations just to see if we can make the GR look, look like a Fuji. So we have some Acros film emulations here. We have Astia. Let's compare it to Adobe Color. I think that looks very nice. Bleach Bypass, Classic Chrome, Classic Neck, Eterna, Nostalgic Neck, Pro Neck High and so on. Let's look at the Leica Monochrome CCD emulation because I think that's very exciting. And I shot black and white exclusively uh, last year in 2020. So this would have been very nice to have. So here we have the Monochrome CCD uh, profiles and they have a bunch of them. I'm not quite sure what these numbers mean like F7 and F2 and all of that. But uh, I'm sure you will find the perfect one for, the, for your file. So this is the first one here without it. So now I created a virtual copy. So on the left side we have the Adobe uh, monochrome profile. On the right side is just Adobe color. And I'm going to go back to my profiles and select one of these uh, monochrome profiles here from the Leica CCD sensor. And let's just use the first one. So first of all, I think the difference here is in the details because I can see a big difference, but if we zoom in and check out the skin tones, I think there is a slight difference. You can definitely see that the monochrome CCD emulation has just more gray, a wider gray scale maybe. You can see that the transition from bright to, to shadow, um, to highlight to shadow is very smooth. And honestly, the left side doesn't look so bad because we haven't applied any contrast on the right side yet but it gives you a little smoother gradation. There's also a profile here called Linear, which again gives you the most dynamic range. And I have used the Leica Q2 Monochrome once, shot a few test shots, and the files look kind of like that if you, when you open them, um, they are very flat. So maybe if you want to get the most dynamic range, this gives you a benefit over the standard uh, Adobe Monochrome profile. But I'm going to use the first one here and let's just edit this photo. Um, I'm going to go out of it. Okay, now we have two identical looking uh, files. On the left side we have Adobe Monochrome and on the right side we have the Monochrome CCD D50 profile. And let's zoom back in again. And honestly, I don't see a huge difference here. Maybe the right side is a little smoother um, and the left side has a little bit more contrast in the skin. It's really hard for me to tell the difference here. Um, I think what we should do is use some of these uh, linear profiles. So I'm going to edit a photo using the monochrome CCD F11 linear profile, which looks crazy flat. But let's see what we can do. I'm definitely starting to notice that I have 
more tones to play with. Uh, it just feels more flexible, this file, because I already have the super flat file. And I think if I compare it to the Adobe Monochrome profile and bring down the contrast as much as possible, something like this, this looks super flat, right? But I think compared to the Leica Monochrome linear profile, I have a feeling that there are just a few more tones I can play with. It just looks a little nicer, I have to say, but maybe I'm just reaching. I guess I'm going to leave it here. This is this looks like something I would be happy with. Yeah, I mean, you will be the judge. I think it's cool for people who have used the Leica uh, Monochrome before. Maybe you recognize these tones. For me, as someone who never used the Leica M monochrome, I can't really tell if this is an accurate um, representation of how the Leica M monochrome looks like. But I have to say it is fun to edit these photos and I'm pretty happy with the results. And I don't see, I don't see this file breaking uh, up in the shadow area. Everything seems to be very smooth, which uh, I guess is the point of this profile. I think what we should definitely do is before we end this is to match two different camera systems because this is what these cobalt profiles are very uh, useful for. So we are trying to match the Ricoh GS3 file on the right to the XH1 on the left. Both of them have the Provia profile applied and they look very close but they are not 100% um, perfectly matched. Every sensor in interprets colors differently and if you look at her skin here on the left side, the XH1 has a more pinkish tone, which is typical for uh, a lot of Fujifilm files. And what we can do here is, and what we probably have to do is go to Hue and just select um, her skin here and try to match um, the tone. So maybe like this. I think this is the closest I can get and I think this already um, is pretty much perfect. It's not 100% perfect, but it's close enough. And if you use two different camera systems, uh, this is one way to match your cameras. And now I'm going to pretend that I just finished editing and came back to do a little outro. <laughs> so yeah, I think I, I'm a big fan of Cobalt now. I, I really appreciate what they're doing. I get that it's a little expensive for someone who just want to play with some film emulations um, because you have to buy these base profiles. But if you are, I think this is more tailored towards either really nitpicky photographers or professionals who just need uh, results. And I can see this being very useful for an event photographer, wedding photographer who uses two different camera systems or even more. And um, to be able to match them is, um, yeah, quite nice. And as I said in the beginning, uh, they didn't pay me to do this. They didn't tell me what to say. I offered them to make this video because I really liked what I was seeing and I really wanted uh, the film emulations and profiles for all of my cameras. Because honestly, guys, I have a lot of cameras and I'm not willing to spend that much money on base profiles. And basically they sent me the, the profiles I need. And so it's a win-win situation. So if you need a reason to start a YouTube channel, this is one of the perks uh, you get if you have some reach. I think you should check it out if you're a professional photographer who needs professional results. Thanks for watching. See you in another video next week.